In this video I'll be taking a look at the 4K UHD Blu-ray disc of Luc Besson's classic The Fifth Element, and comparing it to a 35mm release print. Just how well does it stand up? It was a year ago, around the middle of May 2020, that I started this channel, and it seems to have gone pretty well so far. I felt that I would be able to fill a niche on YouTube for someone who understood film fairly well, and who could say why some discs are better than others. And that usually comes down to the film gauge used when the film was shot. The fifth element was quite modest in this regard, having been shot using the Super 35 process, but it is a good example for me to talk about, as I have only ever seen it previously on 35mm film, and also this Super 8 extract reel from Duran Film Services. The theatrical trailer was also released on Super 8 by Barry Atwood at Independent 8, where he included it on a rather special scope trailer reel with Volcano and Con Air. This is an original theatrical print that I snapped up from California in the late 1990s. I've watched it many times, knowing the film so well meant I could look at the 4K disc and know immediately how good it really is, and also if anything is slightly off or fundamentally wrong. But before we get into that, the basic premise of the film is that the Earth has been protected from the threat of destruction in the form of the evil Mr. Shadow, a planet-sized entity that returns every 5,000 years to attempt to destroy all life. The alien civilization responsible for our protection created five elements, the fifth of which is a perfect being that acts as a weapon to destroy the attacking entity. And that perfect being is Lilu, the fifth element, played by Mila Hohovich. Basically, she arrives on Earth, but is pursued by the authorities and happens to land in the cab driven by Corbin Dallas, Bruce Willis. Thus begins an adventure that takes us across the galaxy in search of the other four elements required to save the world. It's all a complete load of tosh, of course, but it's served up with such camp and tongue-in-cheek humour that I loved it from first seeing it at the Empire Leicester Square upon release in 1997. The film is set 250 years in the future, and it is extremely colourful. There is a particular use of orange which Lilu, the fifth element, seems to be particularly adorned with. Everyone cast has a sort of strange, peculiar look which enhances the overall surreal quality of the picture. Even the cat in Bruce Willis's tiny apartment is cross-eyed, which fits in really well with all the other slightly odd-looking folk. Whilst this film does appear to be a one-off with no particular influences or relationship to anything that went before it, there do seem to be some similarities to Blade Runner. The future city looks similar to the future city in Blade Runner, but contrasts by being bright and colourful. Also, Brian James is in both films, and whereas he's certainly not a replicant in this film, he does seem to have a penchant for photographs again, just as he did in Blade Runner, illustrated by needlessly requesting a photo is taken of the semi-naked Lilu while she's still unconscious. The design throughout is beautiful. The computer-generated imagery fits in surprisingly well, although these sequences are not as seamless on the 4K as they are on the 35mm. The colours are vibrant and suit the spectacular look of the film overall, but none of this is quite perfect on the 4K disc, perhaps because it's simply too good and a bit muted on 35mm. After the opening titles and following the effect shot of the alien ship arriving above the Earth, we cut to Egypt in 1914. And that shot has excessive film grain visible, which may surprise a few people, and perhaps detracts from the superb imagery of the rest of the film. But fear not, because the fifth element was made in 1997, and opticals were still being used to insert titles rather than a computer, and that is the case with this scene. The next shot is pure, and only the finest grain is visible. However, that grainy first scene was not obvious on 35mm, so evidently something wasn't quite right, and that something is prevalent throughout the rest of the disc. 
When I got to the sequence where Lilu is walking along the ledge of the skyscraper prior to jumping off, that looked too harsh somehow. This harsh look is caused by the HDR being too bright, and although this is easy to rectify, I do think that this is the cause of some 4K collectors reporting excessive film grain occasionally on their televisions or projectors. I think that occasionally some scenes have been considered too dark when being transferred to 4K and have been overly brightened up. This can result in video noise, and I do think that occasionally this video noise is being confused as film grain, because I've certainly seen this noise for myself on a few discs. Certainly the film grain is hardly visible on my 35mm print of the fifth element, and I'm able to confirm this because I looked at reels 1 and 2 after viewing the 4K, and the 35mm is generally superior. However, I think the 4K is sharper, but this turned out to be to its detriment after looking at the film print. It looks to have been transferred from the original camera negative, which is why the disc is so sharp, but it also means all the grading has to be done from scratch, because this is carried out from the interpositive for 35mm theatrical prints. The interpositive is then used to produce the internegative, which has all the colour grading and everything else in place, thus facilitating the mass production of prints. This is all to protect the original negative, which is only used for 70mm blow-up prints, although I don't believe there were any of the fifth element, and also perhaps some 35mm Premiere prints. Perhaps the fifth element 4K would have benefited from having come from the internegative for that reason. Too many special effect scenes do not appear to be graded as well as the 35mm. The 35mm seamlessly transitions from in-camera shots to computer-generated images, whereas the 4K has a noticeable change. The future city sequence is the most obvious for this change, as the computer sequences around the live action really stand out. But I know the film extremely well, so if anyone is going to spot a difference, it's me. Because the original filming format was Super 35, an optical process was used to create the 2.4 to 1 anamorphic release prints, and therefore the aspect ratio we have on the 4K disc. There are various sound systems on the release prints, but this 4K was remastered in 2020 and has a Dolby Atmos soundtrack. I run in 5.1 THX Ultra, and the sound was remarkably good. Sadly, there are no extras at all on here, not even a commentary. Despite this, it is an exceptional 4K release, and although it does not come up to the standard of the 35mm print, it is still among the best transfers I have yet seen, in terms of a transfer that has come from a film originally shot on 35mm. But to give an idea of the standard of this one, it is better than the 4K of Total Recall, another Studio Canal release, but not as good as Jaws. The Blu-ray is also very good, but not quite up to the standard of the 4K. So if you're not lucky enough to be in possession of a 35mm print of this film, then this can be recommended as the next best thing. It is another great 4K release to put on your shopping list. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to create similar content to this again in the future. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.